Okay, everybody, so I just wanna do a quick recap here, and you're probably wondering why I have all of these laptops around me. Lunar Lake is an architecture that targets efficiency above all else, but it actually reaches its peak performance per watt between 15 watts and 20 watts. And if you remember that initial review that we did of it, we were actually running it at 30 watts in order for there to be some comparative analysis against competing solutions. So there was a lot of questions. Why are you not running it at its peak performance per watt? And that's what this video is all about. Now, technically 30 watts is at the very bleeding upper edge of the Ultra 7 258V's power envelope, but it was also close to the very bottom of the power spectrum for most of the other devices we had on hand. But running at that higher wattage was the only way to make a fair apples to apples comparison at launch. And running it at a lower wattage, well, that might make this thing into secret weapon, even against the Apple M3. But when we first started in researching devices that could compete against Lunar Lake in its sort of like natural habitat, that's where we ran into a problem. It was actually a lot harder than any of us here at the office ever imagined it would be. We could barely find any laptops that ran their processors consistently under 20 watts. Our options were super limited because laptops with current generation U-series chips are actually pretty rare. I mean, you can find Raptor Lake Zen 3 and even Zen 2, but Zen 4 and Meteor Lake U-series processors, good luck, at least here in North America. But after weeks and weeks of searching, well, as you can probably see here, from these things on the table, we found a pretty good cross-section of laptops that can compete directly against Lunar Lake at that lower power level. And other than power, they're all pretty similar. They have 13-inch or 14-inch screens and 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of memory. The only thing that doesn't quite line up is battery capacity. And of course, price, since many U-series laptops have transitioned to the sub $1,000 category. Whereas until the Ultra 5 CPUs roll out, Lunar Lake tends to be much more expensive right now. But in this video, we're going to push pricing aside a little bit because this is not about comparing individual laptops to one another. This is about comparing one CPU from Intel to a bunch of other offerings that are out there. This is about leveling the playing field on the hardware side. So you have to remember that as we go through the rest of this video. Now, yes, I know you might be screaming at your screens wondering why there's only a single AMD laptop here. And well, they're almost impossible to find in lower power designs, especially Zen 4. But we do have the 7840 U, which is functionally the same as the 8840U. Snapdragon, meanwhile, is represented by the X1P64100. Since none of the other X Elite devices we have allowed their processors to hit the same power level as the Ultra 7 258V. Then again, Apple had absolutely no issue with that whatsoever. As for the Ryzen AI series, well, first of all, there's a limited number of devices around to begin with. And right now, absolutely none of them we have on hand run the Ryzen AI 9 series under 24 watts even though the architecture is fully capable of it. So no, I'm not going to randomly throw in a Ryzen AI 9 series processor into here that consumes up to 25% more than some of the other solutions just to appease anyone. That would be completely biased in a CPU apples to apples comparison for laptops. And I think all of this points towards Lunar Lake's true intent. It's meant to attack a market that's been completely and utterly underserved by at least three or so CPU generations. The ultra low power segment has plenty of U-series options, but they just weren't used by manufacturers. So Intel saw an opportunity and went for it. But you know what has just enough airflow power for your needs? That's this case from Antec. The new Antec Flux Pro is an absolute win of a full tower with tasteful design elements that don't scream for attention but are perfectly mature to stand out among copycat cases and you know Antec will include fantastic out-of-the-box airflow with six fans and proper shroud ventilation to help your GPU breathe better. It's not just a gimmick but a clever use of a 90 degree power supply mount that actually helps with cable management at the same time. This case was clearly designed by PC builders to make your journey as pleasant as possible and is one of my favorite full towers right now. Check it out below. All right, so with the stage set, we have seven different laptops, all with very, very similar designs and layouts. And when it comes to the thin and light market, one thing above all else will stand out for a lot of people, and that 
is battery life. And like I said before, comparing these laptops is a bit tough here since their battery capacity varies wildly. Our intent here, it's not to narrowly focus on what each individual device offers, but rather to see which CPUs provide the longest battery life. So I set up a secondary metric which measures the number of minutes each processor gets per watt hour of battery capacity. And you can see why that's important right here. Even though the 258V equipped ZenBook gets the best overall battery life by a long shot, Lunar Lake's overall efficiency actually falls behind the M3 and X1P64. On the flip side of that coin, it's a massive improvement over the 155U and 155H. I also need to call out the Acer Swift Go 14. Even after testing two of them to validate these numbers, well, it's just terrible and completely against everything that we've come to expect from Zen 4 laptop processors. So what's going on here? We're not sure, but we did find that semi-idle and low load power consumption was through the roof when compared against other devices. We aren't the only ones seeing this either. Back when the 7840U was first sampled in the Swift Edge 16, everyone saw pretty terrible battery life. Whether or not it's an issue with Zen 4 U series chips as a whole, or simply Acer's implementation of it here, well, there's just no way to know since these chips are so darn rare in the wild. Then again, maybe this is why there's so few of them to begin with. Moving on to a light browsing load, and again, we see some really impressive gains over Meteor Lake and especially Raptor Lake processors, even when overall efficiency rather than raw battery life is taken into account. And with all these things being equal, the Qualcomm and Apple chips are light years ahead of the 258V. Give those two laptops equal battery capacities as Lunar Lake and they will simply run all over it. Nothing really changes when we switch things up to streaming 4K video, though suddenly the X1P64 in the Inspiron 14 Plus gets some titanic numbers, despite it having one of the smallest capacity batteries here. Again though, we're seeing a leap forward for Lunar Lake versus Intel's previous generations. However, it just can't keep up with what non-X86 based laptop chips can accomplish. Meanwhile, our heavy load scenario puts more focus on the processor's power state, and since most of the CPUs here are running at identical power levels, their results pretty much even out. There are a few exceptions though. First of all, the M3 runs around 11 watts, so it naturally gets the best numbers, whereas the 155H tends to be a lot more power hungry overall than the other Intel chips here. The X1P on the other hand, well, we couldn't stop it from going into an even lower power state while on battery, so its overall efficiency goes way way up to. So while Lunar Lake's overall battery life is amazing versus Meteor Lake U and Raptor Lake U, when it comes to beating Qualcomm and Apple, well, they've still got a long way to go. And what about actual performance versus the competition? Does that take a massive hit as Intel's newest architecture scales downwards into the 17 watt area? And there's some interesting things going on here because while the eight thread 258V will never ever beat the 22 thread Ultra 7 155H, it actually gets within 10 10% of it, despite using two watts less while also clearly beating the slightly more power hungry 155U and X1P64. Moving on to a newer test with Cinebench 2024, and while Lunar Lake is still able to offer huge generational uplifts versus the other Intel CPUs in this category, especially the 1355U, it actually falls behind the Apple, AMD, and Qualcomm CPUs in a pretty big way. Single thread performance has always been one of Intel's strengths, but Lunar Lake sort of dials that aspect to 11 with performance that beats everything currently available in the 15 to 20 watt market. The only exception, once again, is the M3, which still tends to dominate in some areas. And that single thread dominance translates into great performance in office focused apps, with the only real limiting factor being the SSD write speeds in some tests. Honestly, you might look at this and laugh because we're using an office suite to gauge overall performance, but everyday programs like these are what thin and light laptops are generally used for, so these tests in basic productivity are probably some of the most relevant we run for these platforms. Meanwhile, in more intensive editing apps, the 258V still performs really well and represents a night and day difference when compared against the 13th and 14th gen U series chips, even when we're talking about programs that have a lot more multi-core functionality. Unfortunately for Intel, they still haven't caught up to Apple's M3, and with the M4 right around the corner, this gap is probably just going to widen even more. 
core. As we move on to more intensive multi-core programs, the 258V still puts on a really good showing, but it's eight cores quickly sync performance against CPUs with either more processing threads or simply better optimizations in their operating systems. But looking a little bit deeper, there is one serious standout here, and that's the X1P64. It provides phenomenal value when you consider this kind of performance is paired up with an Inspiron 14 Plus that costs $900 or less when it goes on sale. This situation though, it gets flipped on its head the second Lunar Lake's GPU gets involved in co-processing. Its performance goes from good in Handbrake's CPU-focused transcode to amazing when the quick sync engine kicks in. And video export in Resolve and Premiere, well, it isn't even close. The 258V provides such a huge speed up or the 155U and 1355U that if you have a laptop with one of those chips and edit a lot of videos, your rendering time will be cut down by about half or even more in some cases. The only way you'd get more performance in the thin and light laptop market is, well, jumping into Apple's arms. Another thing we've added to our normal methodology is how laptops perform when they're running on battery. Now remember, in the last video that we did here for Lunar Lake, every single laptop saw its performance just fall off a cliff except the Apple M3. But you have to remember here, we're now setting every single one of these devices to 20 watts or less. And while the Meteor Lake, Raptor Lake, and even Zen 4 laptops had their performance just die, Lunar Lake retains its numbers pretty well, even in multi-core workloads. But I also have to give a shout out to the X1P64 and Apple M3, since they post just as good numbers on battery as they did when plugged in. I mean, sure, this is a touch unrealistic since thin and light laptops aren't typically used for heavy workloads while away from a plug, but it's still good to see at least some performance retention when you need them in a pinch. And while for some people, the raw processing horsepower will be pretty important, even in a thin and light laptop, top, I actually think that it's the GPU performance that has received in the past a completely bad rap when it comes to thin and light devices. And that's because it was sort of like a self goal from all the CPU manufacturers out there. They just didn't put any emphasis on GPU performance for these things. Well, it looks like things are changing because in 3D Mark, the 17 watt Ultra 7 258V simply dominates in most situations, even against the 155H. And the CPU it technically replaces, the 155U, well, that thing is just a speck in the rear view mirror. Meanwhile, gaming is typically one of AMD's strong points, and it's been proven before these mobile AMD GPUs can shine, but they need higher power limits than what the U-Series can actually offer. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. The X1P64 on the other hand, well, that doesn't fare any better, but GPU horsepower is lacking across the entire Snapdragon lineup, so its results shouldn't surprise anyone. I also need to mention our portrayal of Apple here. There are only a few of these tests that are compatible with Mac OS, and in those, the M3 performs remarkably well. But there's a flip side to that too. Unfortunately, there aren't any software-focused tools to log the data we need to include Apple devices in our game frame rate comparisons. We're actually in the process of developing a whole custom suite of tools ourselves, and you'll see some of those over the next few months. But until then, take the 3D Mark numbers as a loose reference of where the M3 would land in games that actually support it. And what about actual frame rates now that power is capped to just 17 watts? Well, yeah, overall output has of course decreased, but it hasn't degraded anywhere close to as badly as other CPUs here, especially Intel ones. As a matter of fact, Every other integrated graphics setup sees their performance run into the gutter, while the 258V is typically in another dimension comparatively. I mean, most of the time, it isn't even close, with the integrated ARC 140V delivering double or sometimes even triple the frame rates as a 1355U and much, much better performance than Meteor Lake or Zen 4. The only wild card here is Zen 5. AMD hasn't released a mid-range Ryzen AI 300 series processor yet, and their partners aren't running the current Ryzen AI 9 chips down to under 25 watts. Once that happens, Lunar Lake might have some honest competition here in the ultra-low power range. But until that point, Intel is all alone at the top of the gaming performance charts. So have all these results using a power envelope that is supposed to play to Lunar Lake's strengths changed my opinion of it? I would say yes but not necessarily for Lunar Lake. What this goes to show is how hungry this side of the ultra low power market is for 
any competition whatsoever. Obviously, ultra low power U-series chips have been given the short end of the stick for way too long. I mean, look at some of the pathetic numbers put down by the 155U and 1355U as proof. Even the 7840U, which had a few amazing results, ended up falling flat. Yes, laptops with these chips are generally less expensive than the new Ultra 7 series, but this still highlights the absolutely sad state of the ultra low power CPU market. Meanwhile, the 258V showed amazing battery life and killer performance relative to the alternatives in a lot of everyday apps, and it just blew the doors off everything in gaming and GPU accelerated apps too. Meanwhile, of course, it does struggle a bit in heavily multi-threaded workloads, but not as much as it did at higher wattages where there are plenty of alternative CPUs. Hopefully this serves as a template for what the Ultra 5 will offer in less expensive designs. So let's round this all up because we've now looked at Lunar Lake in the higher wattage market and now in the ultra low power market. And let's be honest here, what Intel has created for the 25 watt to 30 watt market is something very, very interesting when it comes to performance per watt. But there are a lot of competitors out there and some of them are very, very good. But when it comes to the ultra low power market, the pickings are just so slim, they're slotting these CPUs into an area that is just filled with underperforming processors. And that's where these chips can really, really shine in the 17 watt to 20 watt space. But the one thing that's missing right now from the Lunar Lake lineup and in devices that carry the chips is simply lower cost alternatives in that 999 and lower price bracket. And once that happens, and I'm thinking it's going to happen with those Ultra 5 series chips that are supposed to be coming out in a couple of weeks, well, well, it's hopefully going to shake up the market in a really, really big way. And hopefully it will prompt AMD to finally release the Ryzen AI series in lower power brackets. But until that happens, well, Lunar Lake, it's, it's actually very, very impressive right across the entire range. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm Mike, with Haro Canucks, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.